In today's video, I'm going to be covering uncertainties. The specification mentions limits of physical measurements, suitably vague, um, one of which, of course, is the uncertainties. Uh, we need to be able to apply these limits to practical situations. There is more information on this in the sort of various practical parts of the specification, though. So in the knowledge, skills and understanding section, it says that students have to be able to critically consider methods and data, including assessing measurement uncertainties. And then Appendix 5A, which is all about practical work, question papers will assess a student's abilities to evaluate results, draw conclusions using measurement uncertainties and errors. So this is a very key point. Um, if you're doing the home A level, half of your paper three is going to be on practical work. Um, and there's usually an uncertainty question in there. If you're doing IAL, then either paper three or paper six. So let's have a look and see how is it that we find the uncertainty that, so uncertainties in measured data. There are three ways that we find the uncertainty in measurement. It depends on the measurement. So the first way is using half the smallest scale division. This is the least preferred method because it is only really used for single measurements. If you have to make a single measurement, like for example, if you're measuring the length of an interrupt card that you're going to use for a light gate, there's no point in measuring that multiple times. You're just going to get the same measurement. So anytime you make a single measurement, you use half the smaller scale division for the uncertainty. As an example of this, let's just look at this using a meter rule. Now, there is a small difference between a meter rule and a meter ruler. In meter rule, the end of the rule actually starts at zero, as you can see here. With a ruler, you will have a little bit of plastic or wood that extends beyond and you have to then line it up with zero. So a meter rule is one that starts at zero. And we have two examples here. So the resolution of this one Resolution tells you the smallest scale division, so the resolution of that one is one centimeter, and the resolution of this one is obviously one millimeter, or 0 0.1 centimeters. If you want to make a measurement of the length of this candy cane, and you can see the dotted line shows you the, the measurement, your uncertainty for the top one would be best you can do is four centimeters. So it's four centimeters plus or minus half the resolution or the smallest scale division, so 0 0.5 centimeters. The bottom one has a better resolution and therefore half the smaller scale division is going to be a smaller number. Here our uncertainty is 4.2 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.05. We use these uncertainties usually to calculate a percentage uncertainty. So if we look at meter rule, we'll label them A and B. If we look at A, the percentage uncertainty is the measurement uncertainty, so 0 0.5, over the measurement times 100 to turn it into a percentage, and that will give you 12.5%. 12.5% is really too much. For school laboratories, we would hope to be below 10% overall when we're making a measurement. Um, and 12.5% for an initial measurement means, of course, obviously you're over the 10% already, but it's very likely you're going to end up using this measurement to calculate something else and your uncertainties are just going to get bigger as you calculate. I'll do another video on compounding uncertainties. What about B? What is the percentage uncertainty in B? Again, we take the measurement uncertainty put it over the measurement itself, times 100, and in this case we get 1.2. Much more satisfactory. How do you reduce your uncertainty or percentage uncertainty? The only way to reduce your uncertainty is to use an instrument with a higher resolution, and again, this is just for single measurements. So this is a vernier calipers. The how to use a vernier calipers, there are videos on the internet I will put some links in the description box on how to use these, but a vernier calipers will measure between 0 and 15 centimeters, plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeters. So it measures to a hundredth of a centimeter, and so your uncertainty for that would be 0 0.005, half the smallest scale division, or half the resolution. Now, of course, you're limited to measuring things with a maximum length of 15 centimeters with a vernier calipers. 
The second instrument you can use to reduce your uncertainty and percentage uncertainty is a micrometer screw gauge. That's the full name of it. You, or oh, it's perfectly acceptable to use, to just call it a micrometer in an exam situation. And the micrometer measures from 0 to 25 millimeters. So again, you are restricted to the size of the object that you can measure with this, but it does give you a resolution of 0 0.01 millimeters. So this is to a hundredth of a millimeter, and therefore the uncertainty with this would be 0 0.005 millimeters. The second way that we have of reducing uncertainty, and this is really the preferred way, if possible, is to use repeat data. Repeat data is a tool that does a lot for us. It allows us to assess the reliability of our data, it allows us to assess its precision, and we can use repeats to find out the percentage uncertainty. So, if possible at all, you need to take repeats of your data and use this. And what we do is we look at the range of the repeats and our uncertainty will be half the range of the repeats. Now there are other ways of calculating uncertainty, uh, depending on how optimistic or pessimistic you want to be about your data, but this is the method that Edexcel say you must use when you're doing these calculations in an exam. Okay, so I've put some data down here, timing data, and we're going to look at calculating the uncertainty of this. So the first thing you need to do for any repeats is to calculate an average, and please note that when you calculate an average, you must look for anomalous data, eliminate it from your average calculation, and calculate it from the rest of them. So our uncertainty here is going to be half the range. And that means it's 23.76 minus 22.57, which gives us a range of 1.19 seconds. Dividing that by 2 gives us an uncertainty of 0 0.595. Now, you cannot write your uncertainty as 0 0.595 because that is three decimal places. And our raw data is to two decimal places, so you have to write it as 0 0.60 seconds, and that's going to be a plus or minus. We can then use that to calculate the percentage uncertainty in this data. 0.6 divided by the average number times 100, 2.59%. Our third method of finding uncertainties is using multiples. So similar to the repeat data method, it kind of combines actually repeat data and single measurement method. So if we were have a stack of coins, for example, of just one coin, and we want to find the width of one coin or the thickness of one coin. We can take out a meter rule and we can do it like that. Um, a 2p coin in the UK is 1.85 millimeters thick. So let's look and assess what sort of uncertainty would you get with your different instruments if you took just one coin and you measured it. So with a meter rule, we'd get a measurement of two millimeters, because that's the best you can do. And your uncertainty, because your resolution is one millimeter, your uncertainty is 0.5 millimeters, giving you a percentage uncertainty of 25%. Clearly not acceptable. What about our calipers? Well, the calipers would measure it as 1.9 millimeters. And again, its uncertainty is half its smaller scale division, so you end up with 0.05 millimeters, giving us a percentage uncertainty of 2.6% better. It's still not great, because if you were going to be finding, let's say, the density of that coin, then you would be calculating using this thickness, and every time you calculate, you add percentage uncertainties together. So every time you multiply or divide, you start adding them, and you very quickly start to get a large percentage here. Option three is our micrometer. And that would give us the reading of 1.85 millimeters because it can measure to 100 mil of a millimeter. And our uncertainty would be half that smaller scale division, giving us a percentage uncertainty of 0.27% which is okay, that is not bad. There's a better way of doing it though. If you took a stack of 10 coins, 
That would mean that 10 coins would be 18.5 millimeters. That is still within the range of a micrometer. So instead of just measuring one, you can stack your coins, 10, one on top of each other, up to 10, measure it using the micrometer, and do it that way. So let's have a look at our three instruments now. What sort of uncertainties would, you, would we get? Well, with our meter rule, we'd have 20 millimeters plus or minus 0.5 millimeters, giving us a percentage uncertainty of 2.5%. You can see, because we've multiplied the number of coins by 10, we've divided our percentage uncertainty by 10. With our caliper, we would get 19.0 millimeters plus or minus 0.05, giving us a percentage uncertainty of 0.26%, and again, a tenth of what we had before. And with our micrometer, we would have 18.50, and you'll note I'm being very careful with my decimal places here, 0.005, giving us a percentage uncertainty of 0.05. So you can see that you get massive reductions when you do use multiples. Now this also applies to any measurement that you make. So if you're measuring a distance, for example, if you can measure multiples of that distance, like this thickness of the coin, then you're going to reduce your percentage uncertainty. And when you then divide this 18.50 by 10 to get to the thickness of one coin, you carry the same percentage uncertainty with you. So you still have a percentage uncertainty of 0.03, even though you've divided your the measurement that you made by 10, because your percentage uncertainty is calculated on the actual measurement that you make. Timing experiments are also done this way. So if you are measuring the time it takes for oscillations of the pendulum, for example, you do not attempt to time one oscillation, you time 20 oscillations. Find the percentage uncertainty through your repeats, and then carry that percentage uncertainty when you divide by 20. These are the three best methods. Let's review them again. Number one, for single measurements, you use half the resolution of your instrument, or half the smaller scale division. And for single measurements, if you want to reduce your uncertainty, then you have to use a better instrument, an instrument with a higher resolution. Number two, the favorite one, half the range of the repeats. As much as you can, you have to do repeats. Only if they make sense, though, there's no point in measuring the same thing over and over and over again and thinking that you're doing repeats. If you can do repeats, you use half the range. And number three is multiples, using the best instrument, the highest resolution instrument that you can with those multiples.